guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, doing another episode on the Sweetheart Roadster. Uh, so in the last episode you saw where I had some friends over and they kind of helped me get uh, just a perimeter frame tack together. We showed you some of the process of cross measuring and everything uh, to get it to basically standard dimensions. Um, and, and I know I was doing a little bit of kind of double work here, but I wanted to show you guys the different ways that you can do this. Uh, since I just tacked a couple things, it's not a big deal. Uh, so what I did is I set it to stock dimensions um, and what you get when you have a Model A is you get a little bit of overhang of the frame uh, pretty much almost the whole way back uh, but especially at the cow where the Model A cow is narrower than the 32 would have been. So there's a couple ways to overcome this. Some guys will split the firewall all the way up and they will push it out to get it to match and then weld up the seam, put a little filler patch in and then they just deal with the overhang or you know how it is along the whole way of the frame. Um, the other way is some people they would pinch the frame kind of right here in the front at the cow. We put a pie cut in it and squeeze it together um, and that gets it to pull it together as well and then they again weld it up on the frame. Um, what I'm going to actually do on this one, uh, I want to do a couple things taking from different styles that I like both old and new. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pull the whole frame in uh, from kind of the wheel well forward and pull it all in so that it's pretty much flush with the outside of the body. Uh, not a huge channel or anything like that, but just so that it's pretty much flush and matches the contour of the A body. Also what it's going to do is it's going to get rid of some of this gap uh, that's on between the grill and the, uh, the edge of the frame rail. Uh, where you can see the cross member, it's going to get rid of some of that. So I'm going to pull them together, it's a little tighter, it flows a little better I think. And, uh, and we're just going to play with it and just slice and dice and whatever we need to do to get it kind of flowing how I want it to flow. And we're also going to work on getting the rear uh, sub, uh, sub rails of the body cut so that the rear end can drop back over that. And we'll show you a couple shots of what we're doing before and then the, uh, the process for doing it. So we're going to get started. Okay, so what I did is I, uh, I reset the table up. We, we had everybody here the other night uh, set everything up, and it was pretty good. Uh, but now that uh, I moved things around a little bit, the table isn't where it was sitting. Uh, I was afraid that things had moved some. So I kind of just started over from square one since we're, we're making some changes today uh, and taking it from the stock measurements to in where it matches the body. Uh, so what I did is I took the uh, line that's in the pavement on the ground uh, in the pad in my shop, took some measurements, made sure that it's really nice and square, and they did a really good job, so that line is really, really straight. So I ran my laser here uh, down and got that set up so it's running down the line in the shop really nicely. And then from there, what I did was I took the table and set it up on top of the line, uh, got it squared up and centered, uh, and it also made sure that the chassis was the same, which it was because I didn't uh, really take it off the table yet, so it was pretty darn close. Um, now that I have that all together, uh, I'm sure that everything's sitting how it should sit. Uh, I set the grill on, made sure that was kind of looked right when it sat on, and now I can start uh, just cut the tacks loose in the front cross member and start pulling it in uh, after we cut the bracing uh, loose on it. So I'm going to get started on that, and we'll show you as we pull everything together. Okay, so after cutting the front cross member loose, uh, what we did 
was we uh, cut the bracing out but left the rear cross member welded in. Again, everything square and um, centered up. And we pulled the frame rails in while keeping them clamped in the back. And what that did is that allowed it to pull and kind of match the body line of the car. Um, and it sits pretty much flush here at the cowl. And I took the extra material that we pulled it in, we put uh, one by one box tubing in here that kind of is our spacers, clamped that to the table, took the, uh, the appropriate amount out of the cross member, and we clamped this all in place and I got it centered in here. So now all we need to do is do our cross measurements to make sure that the uh, front cross member is square in the, uh, in the frame to the rear cross member, and then we can tack it again and uh, we should be pretty good to go. Now the one thing I decided to do, and I'm kind of glad that I, I showed you guys how to set it up stock first and now change it, I actually decided to move the front cross member forward uh, about an inch. Uh, that, what that does is it widens the wheelbase a little bit, but it also gives me a little more room in the engine bay. Uh, for anybody that doesn't remember, I'm putting a 331 Cadillac engine in here, uh, which is quite a bit larger than the flathead V8 that it would have had originally. So. That extra inch may be um, what I need to save me a lot of work in the firewall area. I'm still going to have to do some work, but it won't be quite as crazy, I think, with adding that extra inch and might help me with the fan as well. So uh, I added that extra there, and now we can uh, start getting everything welded up. So we're going to do that and show you guys how to do it. Whenever you're ready. All right, so we got the uh, the cross member all squared up and uh, did all our cross measurements, got everything centered, and uh, I threw a few tacks back on this cross member to get it sitting uh, in place so I didn't have to have it clamped and it would move. Uh, I wanted to show you guys kind of where we're at with this before we move further. Uh, one of the first reasons that I wanted to pinch the rails in in the front the way I did by kind of contouring the whole, whole entire frame rail was uh, it pulled in the uh, grill, it pulled in the frame rail so that they're pretty much touching the edge of the grill shell. So it looks like it's supposed to be there. You know, the way it pitches in, there is an excess uh, cross member that's exposed and it kind of flows right into it, which is really nice. I'm happy with that. Uh, down the side of the car, um, you can see that it has a nice flow to it. The body kind of flows with the frame the way we did it. And, uh, I'm pretty happy with how it's going. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get into the trunk area, uh, cut out the sub rails in the back half, and I luckily already have some uh, threaded rod in there that's keeping the body kind of square. And uh, we'll cut that out. We'll drop the uh, rear half of the body down and get it sitting right, and then we can kind of see what we need to do to get the sub rails for the back half built. So we'll get started on the back half.
All right, so after a little bit of uh, dirty work there, cutting out the rear subrails, uh, I got the body um, sitting back down in the rear, uh, pretty decent over the frame. Uh, we still need to do a little bit more trimming uh, in the front here, and then also in the back. Uh, what I was doing was actually trimming away the bottom of the subrails, uh, the little whip that's on it, so that it sits down and it's basically almost sitting on the doors or on the body uh, along the bottom. That way there's not really a big gap like you see on some of the cars when people put A's on 32 bodies. So I wanted to sit pretty much flush across the body, uh, across the frame. Uh, the other thing we did that I'm really happy with, as I mentioned before, is we pinched the rails in up front here and this sits really nice and tight around the grill. Uh, and it's pinched in so that it, it kind of uh, frames the grill, if you will, really nicely and everything's kind of matching up uh, really well. Uh, it's nice and centered, and I'm pretty happy with it. So that's all we got for this uh, this episode. Um, next time, uh, next part of the process is going to be making those rear subrails. So I'm going to make some pieces that flow up around the frame, and uh, we'll keep trimming a little bit, and hopefully we'll have this thing actually bolting on to the 32 frame in the next couple of episodes if all goes well. So thanks, guys, for watching. Catch you later.